you've made it halfway through the sprint. Hooray! Hooray. <laughs> um, and this is skill number 11 and it's focus. One of my favourite topics, so I'm very much looking forward to today. Because I think this is one of the ways that we can cut through complexity, the noise, all of the distraction downfalls to do more of the work that matters to us. And I think when we don't get this right, our work takes longer and our work is worse. So bad news. there's a very strong reason to believe about why focus matters. But I also think there are some really strong forces that get in the way of focus. So Helen, how do we overcome these forces? Well, just before we talk about our ideas to help you overcome it, I think we should give our listeners a little bit of credit because 10 days of sprinting, that takes a bit of focus. It does. That takes a bit of focus. So we're already, I think, already demonstrating this skill. But for some extra ideas to help us develop it more. We have quite different ideas. Yeah, I think it's fair we to have say really today. different <laughs> ideas here. Um, so my, I'm not sure if this is for everyone, but I'm just being honest about what works for me. I create fake deadlines to find focus. So I find deadlines a bit like daunting, like the actual deadline. Like if Sarah said to me, like, oh, let's take a book. Cause actually that is a very real deadline for us. It's kind of writing. The real deadline for our book, I find daunting because it makes me worry about being late, but a fake deadline. So if I've got a deadline a month ahead of that, I find motivating. So weird. <laughs> it's really, really weird. But I, so I, I basically create fake deadlines for everything. And I will make, so I make, lots of fake deadlines in a week I'll be like I've got to get that done by the end of Friday no one has told me that it's a fake deadline I've created for myself but it, it for me just the way that my brain works maybe it's like the do a bit in me having that deadline but without the pressure of it being a deadline that Sarah has imposed on me I don't like a deadline to be imposed like creating my own fake deadlines gives me something to focus on and I have been doing this for a long time like since we were at university together and I would like when you're things had to be handed in I would always create a deadline that was a week in advance of the actual deadline because I then found that motivating and it was all gone and done and everyone else was flapping around and I was like I'm done I'm done without that stress or that pressure of the real one so I know it's a bit weird but it, it I do find it really motivating and it really clear well you know whatever works for whatever you whatever works for you that works for me go on, what works for you I find visualizing the outcome motivates me in the moment so we were sorting out your fake deadlines for you yesterday because I was I was going, but we've got a deadline. And you were like, well, no, that doesn't work for me. So I, we, we were sort of trying to, trying to do that together. And then I was describing, I'd been doing some writing that day. And I'd definitely been in a moment where distraction sort of threatened to get the better of me. I was in a really interesting environment. I'd actually gone to work in a gallery because I wanted a bit of space and I wanted the sort of stimulus. But also I wasn't feeling super energetic. You know, when you're sort of not super up for things, so you're quite open to distraction in that moment. But then I thought about, oh, but I want us to be writing the best book on learning for people's careers that they've ever read. And I want this to be really useful. And I imagine people reading it. I sort of, I think about a reader. I think about somebody in that cafe reading that book. And if I don't find some focus and get started and spend time on it, how is that going to happen? You create fake deadlines. I wonder if I sort of create like fake fear. Yeah. It's sort of like... I was going to say, there's such a pressure. I would I would find that so overwhelming to think... Um, I like Again, I'm really glad it works for you because <laughs> yeah. I, I want you to do like that kind of work. But for me, just that, that, that level of pressure about the purpose of it, I find daunting. Yes. But I definitely see it works for you. Definitely. Yeah, I find it propelling. Yeah. Because I think, well, if this sentence is not brilliant then that reader is going to be really disappointed in me. And I'm like, well, as long as this sentence is written, written by 4pm today, <laughs> it'll be fine. <laughs> so I think I worry about how you do it. I think you worry about how I do it. But fundamentally, it sort of gets us there. Yeah. And I think day to day, there are so many distractions that I hear people talk to us about, particularly around technology, um, notifications, team messages, pressure to respond, getting in our own way, mm. like think things that kind of happen in our own heads. What I am seeing people doing more and more, and this is sort of inspiration from our Squiggly Careers community, is people agreeing as teams, how do we find focus? Mm. So I think we've both talked there about very individual examples, but I definitely now hear teams say, oh, well, we always have an hour at the start and every day when nobody emails, like for example, or we all commit to using do not disturb if you need to go into monk mode for a couple of hours. And they're always like realistic kind of small things or we set really clear expectations around when we do need responsiveness, 
but when it is sort of okay to not expect that. When we're messaging, for example, if you're using Microsoft Teams, do we expect people to respond straight away or is it within the next 24 hours? And having more open conversations about those things. So I think there's sort of two ways into focus, there's sort of you individually and what works for you, but also the kind of the we, what works for us as a as a group to find focus. Also quite linked to having a high trust team, isn't it? If you can kind yeah. of talk about, well, I find these distractions difficult. I'd like to talk to you about how I can find a bit more focus. I think that's a good, that's a really healthy conversation for a team to have. And just on the point of distractions, the recommended sort of learn more from, well, the expert is near Eow and he's actually written a book called Indistractable. He's a previous podcast guest and somebody that I, whose advice I go back to quite a lot. He talks about how as individuals, we might have uh, distractions which are more internally driven. So I'm trying to avoid a situation that's why it's appealing or externally driven so it's where I'm working or you know I've got my laptop open and notifications on or sometimes it's just bad planning like you're trying to do some kind of high focus work in a time when your brain isn't really in that kind of mode and I would really recommend listening and also recommend looking at his book Indistractable if this feels like the skill that you want to focus on a little bit more focus on focus (laughs) very meta (laughs) if that feels like the case then um, go and have a look at uh, Nia's work So that's the end of today's skill and tomorrow we're going to be talking about mentoring. So thanks so much for listening. I'm back with you again soon. 